Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. How are you all doing today? Yep, today as you can probably tell by the title we are going to be doing a Jubilee title. We're going to find out whether or not teenagers have any idea about social media and the good and the bad and depending on your um, taste, the ugly. Now, should we get into the video and find out what's going on? Do people actually support the internet? Do people support social media? And can teenagers that say that they're not using social media not use social media? All those questions answered and more on today's video. Let's get into it, shall we? So before we start, I wanted you to be able to have a quick look and guess about what side do you think is pro-social media and by what side you think are against social media and that type of platforming. I can't imagine if your guess correct or not, but... We shall see. Let me know down in the comment section down below whether you will pick the left side of your picture as the pro or negative side and vice versa on the right side. Let me know down below. I might even put a little bit of a straw poll in there for people to have a gander at and just as a bit of fun. Hi, I'm Alexa. I'm 18 years old and I'm pro social media and I love social media just because of the culture it brings. Hi, I'm Phillips, plural. I am on the pro side and I just like to spread awareness. Hi, I'm Alex, I'm 16. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and a little bit of YouTube. And I am pro social media because it helped me meet a lot of other trans kids when I was struggling. Hi, I'm Ella, I'm 15, and I'm anti-social media because I find it really toxic and competitive for myself. Hi, I'm Emma, I'm 18, and I am anti-social media, and I'm the CEO of a movement that works to kind of promote a healthier existence on social media. My name is Emmy. I'm 16. I'm anti-social media because of personal experience and, like, general anxiety. So, I think that we basically were able to guess what side was going to be pro-social media and what one was going to be... Uh, negative towards social media, right? I'm guessing that we could put that forward as a correct prejudice in most aspects. But let me know again down in the comment section, did you get it right? Did you get it wrong? Were you able to guess correctly? Or do you think that it was wrong for me even asking those questions? As in trading on biases that we may or may not have towards people that are are the pro or against things? Can, can we actually have those type of prejudices? Are, are, are we in general allowed, allowed to have some form of stereotyping or prejudice? I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. I definitely find myself scrolling for hours when I'm bored and mm -hmm. I definitely get sucked in and I can't stop. For me, um, a lot of my school stuff got pushed to social media, all the clubs and orgs. Another one that's more personal to me is that it um, keeps you in touch with your family. All my family's in Vietnam, so mm. yeah. Yeah, and a lot of my friends are online, and I'm just like on their account, you know, like hyping them up or just like texting them on Instagram because I don't, I don't like to use regular text. It's definitely my number one source of entertainment. I don't mm -hmm. watch as much YouTube or Netflix, exactly. and I kind of just go through TikTok, and like that's what brings me joy yeah. sometimes. Yeah, that's TikTok totally is really, easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. short like, attention spans. <laughs> oh yeah. You get sucked in, like you go on for like 30 minutes, and then you're just there forever, and that happens to me all the time. But sometimes I spend more time comparing myself to others. Oh, I'm not getting that many likes, and it kind of brings me down. But um, if I went on TikTok and I kind of just analyzed everyone and just was like trying to compare myself, then it would definitely bring me down. But just as a content creator, I just have the mindset of like, oh, this is what you make and maybe I can make it differently. 
So first of all, I wanted to point out that one of the people that is anti-social media admits that she spends more than three hours on the internet just scrolling around, just using it as a form of entertainment, going on TikTok and, you know, just, just watching videos. Now, I really want to find this interesting, like, if she's just using the social media to watch videos, as in TikTok to watch, you know, social videos and stuff like that, then wouldn't that be an equivalence? Now, not necessarily the same. I understand there's more going involved and it's more social. I do get that. I'm not that much of a boomer just yet. But overall, wouldn't it be more like TikTok than, say, Facebook or the idea of, say, Twitter, which is more social media based where you need to interact with people in general? So you could just watch the videos and move on, similar to how, you know, YouTube is. So uh, does that count as using social media? I'm not 100% sure on that one. I mean, could be maybe. It's a possibility, right? But I do find it really interesting that one of the people that is pro-social media says that he uses it because he wants to keep in contact with his family. Now, wouldn't that be more of a way of an anti-social media person being able to keep in contact and only using it for personal needs rather than it being a case of, well, I just use it for a form of entertainment, right? You also have um, Alex. Um, they have red hair. I, d I don't know what their pronouns are, unfortunately, so I will stay with they. They have um, expressed that it comes to a point that they used it as well to be able to keep in contact with other people and they used it to be able to help them through their idea of uh, loneliness and things like that. Again, doesn't that come through the point of people that are pro-social media using it for an aspect to make it better for them? And the person who is anti-social media just used it to watch videos. I find that dynamic really interesting, that the pro used it for themselves and to keep in contact with their family, but yet the person who is anti-social media just use it as a form of entertainment. And yeah, by the way, um, the girl in the middle, she is a content creator on TikTok. So she's always going to be out there saying that she uses it for stuff that's pro her and pro content and stuff like that. So you, you kind of get that at that point. But I find that whole dynamic really interesting. The two pro were using it for personal needs and talking to people and actually interacting. Well, the person who's anti-social media use it purely as a form of entertainment for that three hours and so on and so forth. Or how she explained it anyway. Then let's find out how the other two are going to be disagreeing with this or showing why they don't use the three hours, shall we? Prior to a movement I started called Log Off, I spent about five hours on social media day and it was to talk with my sister who was in college, but I also got really bad um, repercussions about my body and I felt really terrible after scrolling. But you know, after I rethought about how I wanted to spend my time on there, it became much more productive. Mm -hmm. So I still spend time on like Instagram. It's just to like get a meme from my college sister or to like mm -hmm. talk with friends that really bring me up. I have an Instagram, I have a TikTok, but like I never open the app like ever. I'm clearly not the skinniest and like I have alopecia so I'm losing my hair and like I'll look on social media and like I'll see some like K-pop star and they're like a double zero with the longest hair on the planet and they're like, sil like their skin is silk smooth. And when I take pictures, no matter what I do, you can see the whites of my scalp so I don't take photos and because I don't take photos I don't have anything to post and because I don't have anything to post I don't see a point in opening the app. I find that a really interesting dynamic uh, don't you guys that the reason why somebody used to spend over five hours as at the beginning as a part of their social media experience was a case of the same reasons why they used to do what they every other person on there does, which is trying to keep in contact with the family and so on and so forth. But then they would get s some negativity about their weight, about the size, about how they look, so on and so forth. And yet that was the negativity that stopped them from using the social media. Now, that's not a, should we say, a productive way to stop the use of social media. I think that kind of lets the trolls win, but I can also understand why you wouldn't want to be on a platform 
where you always get a form of negativity or at least perceive yourself to always be getting that form of negativity. Then we move on to um, the other lady as well at the end, uh, the Asian lady. Um, she was coming out and saying that she doesn't like it again because of her appearance. But this one was more of a case of self-deprecation rather than a trolling experience. She already thinks or feels that she's already going to be prejudged because of, I don't know, social norms or how people are supposed to stereotype her as an Asian lady uh, to be. So she comes out and says that she doesn't like the way that she looks, she doesn't like the fact that she's got alopecia, the way that she can't grow her hair, the way that her scalp always looks like she's going to have some white on it, and so on and so forth. Which, I can understand that. I, I really can. If you know that you've got some problems and things like that, you're not really going to be posting videos if you've got a massive zit on your head. You know, just in general, it's just not not really what you're going to post is it the same thing for other disabilities you may not want to show off uh, your weak chin if you're leafy or something like that yes i know really old reference but i thought i'd get in there but that type of situation seems to be a a thing that stops people from enjoying social media the other self-deprecation that comes from prejudging yourself or comparing yourself to others compared to the actual trolling from other people that are just scrolling through and just give pure negativity for no other reason depending on whether or not you're even actually even looking for gratification you know just posting a video on general and somebody come along and saying oh you're really fat or you're really basic or you're really ugly it's kind of going to stop you from being able to produce that and enjoy in social media and maybe that's a basis of why these girls that are against social media Maybe that's the basis for why they're against it. Because of the negativity that is ascribed to it from using it and from the people that are on it. So maybe they're not actually against the social media itself, but just their either perceived experience or their actual experience that leads them to be anti-social media. Interesting dynamic to see here and see how the experience takes us forward. I get a hundred notifications a day from my best friend saying, I found this new video you would love. And I'll click on it occasionally and I love the video because it's funny, it's short, mm -hmm. and it like matches my personality. But it makes me really upset when like I FaceTime with my friend and she's scrolling through TikTok. It's really scary to see my friends kind of disconnect with me and just connect with these people they've never met. I found that section really actually interesting. I know it was really brief. But I actually found it really interesting. I really feel that it's something that needs to be commented on. Hopefully not for too long as I'm tending to almost be doubling this already a 20 minute video. So hopefully in editing I can cut this bit out. So I find that bit really interesting to the point of I really need to comment on it. Because it's something that really intrigued me. To the point of where... The girl is responding to the other girl saying, well, yeah, well, I get 100 notifications a day and I really like the idea of the videos and things like that. But then I see the point of her spending lots of time online and, you know, just scrolling through TikTok or whatever, whatever platform. And, you know, it just shows me a level of disconnect and I'm a little bit scared from it. If I'm honest, before I give another form of commentary, I would also say that there's a form of jealousy that goes into that as well. You, you kind of want your friend's time when you're spending time with them. Um, even in my generation of, you know, the 20s to 30s or the 30s to 40s, I still get that now with some of my friends, where they're on their phone, either texting or watching videos and things like that. And you're just thinking to yourself, well, come on, guy, I'm, I'm here to see you. Like, are we going to talk or are you going to be on your phone? I, I do get that kind of idea but you're then going completely against the whole idea of the social media and the idea of the connectivity that you can have with these random strangers that are all over the world to the point of being against that because your friends are not too interested in you anymore i mean don't get me wrong we could definitely strike a balance and there does need to be a readjusting of that kind of balance but to be against social media for that reason impartial seems to be i don't know a little unbalanced at that point it's like yeah you like all the videos that you can see and you can follow but i'm not going to use the platform just in case i turn into the my friend that doesn't really talk to me when i'm you know talking to her 
I don't know. It, it seems principled, but maybe there's another reason why that principle is in place. And I think it stems more for the point of, well, if I'm not busy, you shouldn't be busy. And maybe there's a form of jealousy in there. Maybe. Again, I, I know I'm armchair analysing here, but I don't know. It seems to fit. Again, what do you guys think? Let, let me know in the comment section. Do you think I've overstepped a mark there or, or do you think I'm bang on on that one? That we're narcs and that we kind of hate social media like parents hate social media. I don't think they really know our stories and know why exactly we don't want to exist on the platforms in the way that they are. I've had hurtful things posted about me and the thing about the internet, it's, it's there forever. And it's not like a word that was just said to me on the playground. It's something that's out there and other people can see. Again, I actually think that that's a really important part to this story. Like when kids, teenagers, young adults talk about not being on social platforms, a lot of people always do call them narcs or, you know, you're just not wanting to be part of the hip crowd or, you know, all those other narratives that come along. Where when the two girls actually talk about it, there's, there are reasons why people don't want to be on social media being bullied, being bullied at home while they're supposed to be safe and secure when they go online, they're on their Facebooks, they're being bullied by all of the bullies and so on and so forth. Just being called names in general and being hurt, being called names that cannot be taken away, videos that are explaining something that happened that can never be taken away, being beaten up, being assaulted, being bullied in general to the point of psychological damage being occurred on there. To just simply not wanting to be a part of the social media crowd because you want to talk to the friends that you have. There is such a wide spectrum of why people don't actually want to be on social media. And rather than giving them grief over it and trying to say, well, you should be because I am, it's not really an argument, really, is it? Let's be honest on that side of things. If somebody doesn't want to be on something and they have a reason for it, you should respect their reasoning behind it. You shouldn't be trying to force them onto it because you've had a good experience. That doesn't mean that the other person is going to have a good experience or has had a good experience on it. Not everybody likes the waltzers, but some people love them. Not everybody likes to go on a roller coaster, but some people love them. Using a, a very easy one here, some people love Marmite, but some people don't. It, it's kind of that type of thing. Some people really get onto it. Some people, you know, just use it. And some people have had such a bad experience or have the perception of it going to be such a bad experience that they just don't want to use it. And I think talking to people and sticking up for people and trying to stop those trolls from getting to these people and just generally standing up for these people online in general is enough to be able to keep these people online. But again, back to my previous point, if nobody wants to be online, they don't have to be. I think that's really important. We need to hear the stories of why people don't want to do things more than having a prejudgment about why people don't have that and don't do that. I really do think that that's something that's missing from today's Discord, like the asking of why and how. There can be communities found within social media, but my personal experience with it and from a lot of stories that I've heard through Log Off is that a lot of kids have lost people because of social media. And I think that that constant mindless scrolling allows you to kind of go into this bubble and just hunker down and to not really talk with people. I know a bunch of kids that like don't know how to communicate outside of like an emoji or like outside of like a picture or like only have one picture face and like will repeatedly take the same, like we'll stop everyone in the front group to pick a wall and just sit there and pose and take a hundred photos and stand there and wait. Like, no, no, I'll take one more. I definitely like would base like entire friend groups to hang out and just take pictures. Like we wouldn't communicate, it would just be pictures just to post on Instagram. And then I would find myself that like we didn't even connect when we were hanging out, it was, wasn't quality time. Because I feel like, oh, I have to get that perfect photo of all of, us, all of us looking like we're having fun. Even if we're not, I just need to get that so I can post it. After a while, you feel the pressure and everything. People start being people and they're just empty profile pictures. People will come to me and they won't know my name. They'll go by my screen name. And then I'm just like, uh, am I human? <laughs> I really do think that that's some really interesting takes there. I think there are actually some really adult conversations that people need to have with that, especially with their children as well, where you have the girls explaining that even with their family members, when they're spending time with their family, the children themselves, the ones that are on social media and TikTok, need to get that perfect picture and 
just so you know, I literally just tried to do the animation by myself, trying to pretend that I was taking a picture because it's so universal. I, I know what that means. I, I've done it myself when I've been spending time with family and I've been like, yeah, I just need this picture to post. Uh, I, I need to put this caption together. I need to send this tweet. Uh, oh, I need to send this message to my mate on Facebook and so on and so forth. Right? I really do get where these people were coming from and these ideas are coming from. Especially when it comes with spending time with friends where all they're doing is trying to get that special picture to say, oh yeah, aren't we having time? I've actually been out with a couple of my mates and have looked across to people that are younger than us on a, on a table having a night out, not speaking to each other, tweeting, posting pictures, holding their drinks up, not even drinking the drinks, and just trying to post pictures to pretend that they're having a great time. Like, social media to me, and I know I keep on using like, like I'm dropping into a, a different time period at the minute, and I'm getting younger and younger as I'm going. I'm, I'm aware of it, and I do understand the mannerisms. But it is to a point where they are looking at what people think of them that are on their social media accounts, rather than the people they're with and enjoying the actual time that they have with the friends that are around them. They get more of a dopamine hit, more of gratification from getting the likes and the the shares and so on and so forth, watching the numbers in general or the messages or the replies or even in some cases the hate that comes with it. Some people generally get off on the hate that comes to them rather than the actual people that they're supposed to be spending time with and they're supposed to be enjoying their time with, e.g. family, friends, cousins, whatever. They seem to be taking that away. And another thing with what the gentleman said there as well, that some people, not me luckily, I'm nowhere near that big and hopefully I never do get that big, where people come up to him and were like, oh yeah, you're this person, you're that person. It's just like, no, like my name's Lynn or my name's James or, you know, my name's Jeff, that type of situation. But no, it's more of a case of, oh, you're the common sense guy, aren't you? It's like, no, I'm this person. Am I actually human? Apparently... Apparently, no. The internet takes away that interperson reaction and communication now. It's more of a case of you're a screen name, you're an emoji, you're a profile picture. And I do understand why people are against it for those particular reasons. But as well, it, it's so social where you can interact with people at any time or anywhere and do so much with so little. And I think, personally, in my opinion, the pros actually outweigh the cons. But the cons definitely need to be talked about and they definitely need to be explored because we do need to sort out that disconnect with our real lives compared to our internet personas. I like to ask questions in comments and ask like, oh, where'd you get that? Or, you know, like, what hair dye did you use? Or something like that, because I think it's a lot more engaging. Or I like to, sometimes I'll make my, like, my posts, I'll make it a question, like the, the, the caption. I like to interact with, like, a lot of my followers through comments because I'm uncomfortable, you know, messaging them personally. It's good to, like, interact with the Definitely. people that support you. But what would you say to, like, bigger influencers like Kylie Jenner or, like, Kim Kardashian that can't in have that interaction via the comments? Yeah, and then Alex, some people just don't even reply to you. They'll just double tap, like the message. Going off what you said about like making real human connection, have you ever like looked into like social media accounts that like promote that? Because I don't know if you guys know, we're not really strangers. If you guys know them, they have a card game. You don't know. Okay, so it's basically a card game where you have perception, analysis, and then reflection. And then you just have conversation, like, or how are you really? Or, you know, if, well, how, like, what's, what, do you, what, do you, what would you name the chapter of this in your life? And then, boom, we're in a 20-minute conversation that, like, she feels really low and she's trying to change. And, then, and, you know, and I would have never thought that if this social media account didn't push me or didn't encourage me to have deeper conversations. I agree, but I think the issue is with the algorithm in place, like that's not popping up on my feed. Like I'm not, I don't right. know that those exist. And cause it's so expansive and cause there's so much hollowness and mindless scrolling, like mm -hmm. I've never found that. If I found that, I would have loved that. With the algorithm and the fact that you never see those things, like I always feel like we're on a whole different side of TikTok than you are. And all it takes is just to look up like deep conversations on the internet. There would have been a Vogue article about well, we're not really friends and then you would have looked it up, you know? So in order to change your algorithm, you just have to change the things that you're looking for. But you don't know? you think maybe like the algorithm rhythm in place is what's making it so dangerous because it's like they're pumping out these really terrible kind of like content videos but also you've got like the attention economy where they're like fighting to get your information to then give to people to like to put ads in your feed that you won't notice even 
if you're not on social media, you know it's gonna do that anyway. Like if mm -hmm. you're searching anything up, like if you're searching something up on Safari and you go onto your computer onto Chrome, the ads will probably be the same. You know, right. it's just, just the internet. It's just it's technology. You know, right. um, I sat down here saying that social media makes people antisocial, but hearing Alexa and Alex speak. It makes me remember that um, social media isn't just you know the whole TikTok scene. It's also schools. There's clubs and stuff. Um, I've made a couple new friends from social media because um, they live in Ventura. I live in San Diego. So I don't think it's necessarily just the whole big fame thing. There's also the smaller group. Again, I actually find that interaction really interesting because you had the different experiences of the internet. So you had the experience that was negative, that was, well, explaining the worldview of social media. And you had the people that had positive experiences that explained their experience of social media and how they defined the social media experience. It's very interesting how the experience of social media and how they've treated it and how they've gone through it is so very, very different in how they've come up to different points. Because my experience has been mixed, and I actually have a mixed opinion about the idea of social media. It's almost like experiences can, and sometimes do, mostly, dictate what you actually have as a worldview and how you experience things, and how you have opinions of those experiences. Interesting. Hmm. But I would, will say that I find it interesting overall that they tended to talk past each other. Those experiences that somebody had good wasn't being reciprocated by the person who had it bad and vice versa for the person that was having it bad wasn't being understood by the person who had it good. Saying, oh yeah, but you can do this, you can do that. But if you don't know how to do it, then you can't do it and that dictates your experience of it. Especially if you've also had the bullies and been exposed to that type of thing before and it backfired to you. So it's really interesting how that dynamic is already showing through that the experiences dictate where they've been, how they're going and where they're probably going to go. And yet they were still talking past each other and not really taking both experiences, both spectrums, ends of spectrums into their worldview or into their understanding of the experience. I find that the most interesting aspect of this. And as well, you also had um, the, the gent there that was able to say that he changed his opinion. Because, yeah, it is good and it is bad. It's, I don't know. It, it's probably having the same experience as what I'm having. He's got mixed feelings about it. It is good and it is bad. So I, I kind of get where he's coming from. He's trying to see it from both sides of the fence, so to speak. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think that they're talking past each other at this point? Or, or do you think that it's a case of their experiences are dictating each other and that's it, they're set in their worldview and nothing's going to change it on that one? And so they experience something different? Or am I just completely wrong on that and I just completely messed up what they actually said? Let me know, I'm actually interested. What do you guys think? I know you guys remember like those musically days. I feel like that was my biggest bullying because it's like when you're, it's just like entering a whole different society. It's just like when you're going out, you're making videos, you don't really know what you want to post or what you want to do or what you want to look like. So it is going to be cringy at first and it's not going to be great. Musically was definitely a dark time. Um, <laughs> more recently, I did have a hate account on Instagram. They um, like told me to kill myself and told me that like because I was upset about my pet dying that I should kill myself and that. I like was ugly and I looked like a clown. And yeah, I really, really, really let it get to me for a long time. But then I realized, you know, like they're only making fun of me because I'm giving them attention about it. So I just had to like block them from all my accounts and block all the people they were following and block all the people that were following them. And then I just had to stop looking. And mm -hmm. if I don't look at it, then I don't know what they're saying. Right, and that's the thing, it's just like, once you stop looking into it, it's, you just stop feeding the fire and it will die eventually because you just don't even pay it no mind. I don't have a big following, so it's mm. basically mostly people I know. Usually it's TikToks, and it's not with my name in it, but you can tell that it's implied towards me. Mm. And I try not to comment, but like there's some points where they're coming out and saying like completely false things about me. Posting and hating on someone through the internet is completely different from in person because it's there forever. You don't have control over that because it's up to them to delete it. Again, I think that interaction is really interesting where you actually have 
the the exchange of the good and the bad and how they dealt with it. But then it gets to the point of what I think is really the crux of what this argument is. If you're getting bullied on social media by people you don't know, you can and you should block those people. But if you're getting bullied by people that you know that is still going to get shared to you because your friends are going to show you or something like that, you've got nowhere to really hide. That's the point where social media and the bullying of social media comes a almost inescapable void that just sucks you in to the point of do you actually make your account? Do you actually start defending yourself? Because think for a girl, for instance, if you're being called a slut or if you'd be called, called this or you'd be called that or, you know, you're, you're sleeping around, you know, all of the things that stereotypically demigrate girls, things like that, or, or the opposite way around, oh, you're too virtuous, you're, you're too frigid, blah, 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 that type of situation, then it comes to a point of you, you kind of want to defend yourself and you kind of have to know why people are bullying you and you have to try and defend yourself and it's very hard very hard to be able to switch yourself off from that point and go well these people don't matter when literally the next day you have to go into school or college or wherever even into workplaces and deal with that still being talked about you in your face being shared around by people that are laughing at it that are still your friends that are going oh yeah yeah i completely get it how, how do you actually defend yourself against something in that sort of situation? Because you can't block everybody in your school. And even still, even if you do do that, you're still going to have people come up to you that may or may not be your friends and showing you the actual videos and things like that that are still going around about you. So, yeah, it's okay if you don't know the people to block them. But social media in itself doesn't just affect the people that you don't know. In actual fact, it has a higher reputation and a higher damage point from the people that bully you that you do know. And I think that's a discrepancy that we have. And I think that's where we have to actually have a look permanently to decide whether or not we need to do anything as nations, as governments, as institutions, or the platforms themselves, what they can do on that. Because otherwise what's going to happen is people are going to get left behind and people are going to feel that there is nobody to protect them. There's nobody that can do anything. I can't talk to my mum and dad. What can my mum and dad do about it? I can't talk to the school because what are they going to do about it? I can't talk to my friends because they're the ones showing me so they must support it. And it kind of completely and utterly isolates you from that type of situation. You cannot and feel like you cannot do anything. I think... That's something that a lot of people actually need to take into account. It's easy to say, yeah, let's block them. But if you actually know the people that are doing it, you physically can't block those people in real life. Something to take into consideration there, ladies and gentlemen, and however you may identify. Let me know about your stories down below. Instagram. TikTok, everything is the highlight reel. My Instagram, I'm not gonna post the ugliest picture of me. When I scroll through my friends, I, in the back of my head, I should know that, that that's the same for them. Yet I'm like, they look so pretty. Why do I not look like that? And I think for younger generations, it's really scary that they're gonna have to deal with this. I have this one photo that's so vivid in my memory. And like, I'm at like an aquarium and I'm leaning against like one of the fish tanks. And my dad and my, dad and my brother are next to me. And I'm like half my brother's height my face just sagging, my body, like my clothes don't fit on me. And I'm like, at that time, I didn't realize how depressed I was and how, how much these like, these like dance photos were ruining me. That's kind of when I knew like social media is not something I, I, like I'm not safe here, you know? And so an excuse I can make for not pleasing people online is that I don't use it. And then I'll be okay. Mm. The, thing, the bad thing about social media is like if you have a bad friend in real life and your mom's like avoid them, don't be next to them and stuff, but on social media you almost can't avoid them. And I feel like that's where like a lot, a lot of kids can get hurt because they comment rude things on your things or they don't share the same opinions and those friends are horrible, you know? I don't know how Tumblr is now because I don't go on it, but there are a lot of like self-harm pages and eating disorder pages with like ideas to make yourself lose weight. There's so much of that on Tumblr that I had to get off of Tumblr um, and I think that definitely will hurt. 
kids mm -hmm. now and in the future. I just can imagine being like 10 or 11 or 12 just being so young and looking through this and taking all these suggestions in. I'm 18 now, like I go through it and I know better, but I feel like you could get seriously hurt when you're young because you really just don't know any better. Yeah, I'll just play back on what you said about how little kids don't know better. I saw a hack where it was like a scoop of ice cream and it said microwave the spoon. Most, uh. ch most children wouldn't know. And yeah, in cases like that, it does hurt me to be pro-social media. But social media, I, I think it was always more in intended for more discretion. Like, I, I have this friend named Jessie Page, and she is very, very, like, pro-body positivity and, like, pro, like, like mental health, you know, like really like I want to get better. That's why I keep all my posts up mm -hmm. because I want people to be able to go back and look. I wasn't on T for three years, you know, right. when I was out, you know, like I was fully out and like fighting for myself to start hormones. My friend Jessie too, she also puts before and after. She always puts like, this is the real me. Right, so I think that this has actually been a really interesting video. I know it's a bit of a long video and I am sorry about the length, but they did make some really interesting points and I actually thought that it was a very interesting topic, to be honest with you, where it's a case of, yeah, you do have a lot of issues and a lot of problems with social media and there is a lot of positives as well, a lot of positives. But I think that with those cracks, they're not really covered over, they're not really looked after, and they're not really discussed. They're kind of swept to the wayside, where a lot of the situations and the problems occur, not from just random people online that you can block or mute, or, you know, so you can completely not, not see them at all. But it actually stems from the people that you know, that are in your classes, that are part of your friend groups, your friend circles, your work circles. Those are the types of things that are causing people so much problems on social media, as, as described by the people of the day, where you do have the bullies that are following the people home and now actually even attacking them in their own home, so to speak. And yeah, this isn't a form of an attack. They are being attacked physically, mentally, psychologically. It's a case of these are something that we really need to start talking about. The idea that social media is just a universally great platform, it's just not true. There are so many problems and so many issues overall socially that we actually need to talk about. And I know that some of the people on the right or the right side of politics, the conservatives and so on and so forth, will be like, oh, man up, deal with it. You can you can have it, you, you know, sort it out, you know you know, go beat him up or, or do something. I, I can hear the people in my head right now talking about that. But sometimes you just physically can't. You're just not physically able to go and take on, what, the whole school? Take on the 10 or 12 people, that are the entourage of the people that are online that just follow them around everywhere? You just haven't got that type of skill to be able to fight those many people. And you can't do it online, and you can't do it in real life. The schools don't really have the power to really do anything in real life. The internet platforms themselves don't really have that much power that they can do. And even if they do, it then comes back to the kids will then attack them in real life. And then the school's not going to know what's going on. You kind of need a like a three-pronged attack on this. You need the police to know, you need the school to know, you need the internet platform to know as well. That way they can all, you know correlate evidence, do what they need to do, and make sure the kid is protected. Because until that protection comes, you are going to get people like that that are not going to enjoy the good aspects of social media. And no, that doesn't mean holding their hand through the whole of the trollish experience or anything. It generally means if there is something harmful that can be harmful to those kids or children or adults, that it's watched, it's followed, and if police action needs to be taken than it needs to. Just letting the internet be the internet is a dangerous thing for our children to go through. It simply is too many predators and that's not even accounting for adults pretending to be children to groom these vulnerable children that look for these people that are preyed upon by their peers, their other children, to take full advantage of them. So there's so much of the internet that needs a little bit more consideration. I'm not necessarily the guy to set out all of the platform that needs to be done. 
But surely we need more conversations about why these types of things are happening and what we can do to actually rectify these problems and actually look after our children online. But what do I know? I'm just some guy on the internet, right? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I almost feel really guilty in asking this, but please like, please share, please subscribe. And if you want, call me all the names that you want. It really helps the algorithm on YouTube. So thanks, guys. Speak to you all again real soon. Take care. And I really hope that this has actually provided a bit more thought of what actually goes on and why people dislike social media and the general reality of why they dislike it. Because it's not just a case of, oh, I'm a prude and I don't like it. It's generally because that they've had a bad experience of bullying, of, oh, anything really, isn't it? And it's just a case of asking them and taking the time to understand it rather than just going, yeah, it doesn't really matter, right? That being said, guys, take care. Bye-bye for now. See you again real soon. Bye-bye.